it's all connected back to the health of our soil. When you see those statistics that we only have 50 more years of topsoil, so to not take care of our soil as the only bank that matters, the only bank that we should really be worried about where we're putting resources into, seems crazy to me. Welcome to Regenerative Journey. In this episode, I share the story of Soahard Farm, an 18-acre farm located in Fillmore, California. It's a unique story because the farmers are chefs, and everything they grow on the farm, they use in their restaurants and any of the food waste from the restaurants comes back to the farm. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. And if you want to see more stories about regenerative agriculture, please subscribe to this channel. And I want to hear from you in the comments. And check out the show notes where you'll find more links to additional videos taking a deeper dive into the specific practices on the farm. Let's jump in. I'm Molly Englehart, and this is my husband. Elia Sosa. Um, this is our farm, and the story of how we got here is not a straight line. So we've been running restaurants, Sage Vegan Bistro, and then we added the brewery and Sage Bistro Beer Garden and Brewery. And I found out through Graham Sate, his TED Talk, about regenerative agriculture, and I was like, Oh my God, there's a solution and nobody's talking about it. So I started talking to every guest in the restaurant. Have you heard about regenerative agriculture? Do you know I didn't convince a single customer to buy some land and do it? And then I realized, oh, I should buy some land and draw down carbon. We looked at this property and we didn't really like it. He said it was too many rocks. Yeah, too many rocks. It was full of rocks, no soil. Two years in, it's a totally different place here. We have cover crops everywhere. Um, we're building soil. We're building soil. We're growing so many different things here and we're blessed that we have a restaurant and so we're growing what the restaurant needs. our animals here on the farm. They're really in partnership with us. Holistic plant grazing is trying to recreate what happens with the buffalo or the gazelle where they run through the grassland, they're there for a day, eat, eat, poop, poop, eat, poop, and move on. So they don't desecrate it. It doesn't create dirt desertification or overgrazing. Um, we're recreating that with these 10 by 12 rolling pens and we'll put several sheep in them and we move them and move them and move them. So it's our mower, it's our fertilizer, it's our regenerating the soiler and we have similar things for chickens. Chickens we let them run free but they only go about 20 feet from their house so we move their house. So everybody has a job to do, not just here on the farm with the restaurants as well. The restaurants are sending their compost, the brewery is sending its grain. The grain is then being inoculated with microorganisms and feeding the chickens, and the chickens are pooping those microorganisms onto the ground, or the cows are pooping the microorganisms from the spent grain onto the ground. And so it's all um, together. The restaurants are sending their compost, which is going to the worms. The worms are making the worm castings, which are going into the compost tea, yeah. or going directly onto the ground. A whole circle. And the thing is, is that if we let that compost go to the landfill, it would create methane, and methane is 10 times more dangerous than carbon. So we're doing double the work by taking it, not having it go to the landfill, and then having it break down and turn into soil, carbon sequestered down. Like, we're doing two good jobs. We're not creating methane, and we're creating carbon and healthy soil. And we have to diversify in such a way that if the commodities markets are not good for us, agro or ecotourism is good for us. Local CSA boxes are good for us. Local farmers markets are good for us. Local relationships with chefs are good for us. And so by having the diversification, or what I call micro incomes, 
You don't have one thing that takes you out. My goal is not to necessarily make money with the whole farm, but to figure out what's working and what's not working, and so I can share that and pass that information on when people are like, oh, I'm thinking of transitioning these lemons or these avocados or these oranges. Okay, well, I'm gonna have the information on how that's an area that is working, that's an area that is making money, so let me show you how we're doing that. And the reality is the uh, economics of buying land in Southern California and farming is bad. But there's lots of people that are gonna inherit land very soon that may see things differently than their parents. On my street here, almost everybody's 90 years old. There's a changing of the guard that's happening and I wanna have information to give those people. They would be like, Everywhere. Everywhere. Toads, toads, toads. And that's back in balance. It's like a normal amount of toads. They don't fall on your head.